Hello fellow controllers and online pilots. I'm McChester and thanks for visiting my channel. Today we are going to talk about general rules of thumb related to speed control. If you want to know even more about the topic, there's a useful Skyberry link in the description below. Let us begin. The goals of uh, today's session include, but are not limited to, that we want to know the general rules of thumb of speed control in the end. We want to be able to assess the required distance to be achieved uh, between two aircraft. And uh, we want to be able to calculate the speed difference between said aircraft to achieve the distance that we need. At very first, we need to know the general rules of thumb. Uh, these are not mathematically correct but uh, they give you an idea and they are more or less ballpark numbers uh, to base your calculations on. The first of which is uh, that a difference of 0 0.01 Mach equals a ground speed difference of 6 knots. The second one is that if you have two aircraft that are flying uh, 1000 feet apart with uh, the same indicated airspeed in knots, that also equals a difference of 6 knots in ground speed. Also, there is uh, is uh, required to know that one knot ground speed equals one nautical mile per hour. And uh, this, of course, equals that if you have a ground speed of 60 knots, that equals uh, one nautical mile per minute. Let us put this new gained knowledge to the test with a very easy example. We have two beautifully drawn aircraft targets uh, right here. Um, both of those uh, aircraft are merging at the same waypoint in one hour or 450 miles. Um, that means that both aircraft are flying a ground speed of uh, 450 knots, but that's uh, not really important here. So uh, what's going to happen if we do not take any action? The two aircraft are going to merge at the waypoint. Our goal that we want to achieve is uh, we want to have 10 nautical miles separation once those two aircraft uh, have passed said waypoint. And for that we need to determine the delta speed, the speed difference that we require those two aircraft to have. So um, for one, one a knot in difference in speed equals one nautical mile of uh, separation per hour. And since those two aircraft are flying one hour, that's rather easy to calculate. So we have one hour time for 10 nautical miles. And uh, if we uh, look back, so for one knot of uh, difference, we, we gain one nautical mile per hour. So for 10 nautical miles, we need 10 knots of difference. That's the delta speed that we require. So, um, with uh, that said, with the 10 nautical uh, correction, with the 10 uh, knots of delta required, um, we go back or we think about the rules of thumb that we had before, uh, which uh, say that uh, 0 0.01 Mach equal a uh, ground speed difference of six knots. So in order to achieve uh, a 10 knot difference, uh, we need, of course, 0 0.02 Mach, which equals uh, a delta speed of 12 knots approximately. So with a delta of uh, 0.02 nautical miles, we will have uh, not 10, but 12 nautical miles at the emerging point, which uh, is more than sufficient. With the second example, uh, we have a similar situation, uh, but uh, the time constraint is uh, a little bit more pressing. We only have 30 minutes left in order to achieve the required uh, separation. And if we take no action, we're going to have a merge at the waypoint once again. The goal this time is 7 nautical miles, and uh, we're going to need to determine the speed difference that we need to have uh, for those two aircraft to achieve the 7 nautical miles separation at the waypoint. Uh, once again, uh, one knot of difference equals one nautical mile per hour, but uh, this time we're not having a full hour, we only have 30 minutes. So um, we have to extrapolate all this uh, calculations for, for the hour. So we have 30 minutes of time to achieve seven nautical miles. If you, if you would uh, extrapolate this for the hour, um, this would uh, mean that we need 14 nautical miles for one hour. That's the same as seven uh, nautical miles in 30 minutes in half an hour. So therefore uh, we need 14 nautical miles per hour, which is a delta speed required of 14 knots.
And once again, uh, let's calculate this in uh, Mach. We need uh, 14 knots uh, of ground speed uh, difference, delta, and uh, 0 0.01 Mach equals 6 knots of ground speed. So um, we cannot do this with uh, 0 0.02 because this would only equal uh, 12 knots of uh, speed difference. So we need to take uh, the next bigger number, that's 0 0.03, that equals 21 knots ground speed delta. And this is going to achieve 10.5 uh, nautical miles of separation, significantly more than uh, the 7 miles that we require, but we are on the safe side. Um, why 10.5 miles? So once again, let's extrapolate this uh, for the hour. Uh, we will have a speed difference of uh, 21 knots for a full hour, because it's a delta speed, and uh, we only have half an hour of time, so half of 21 knots is at 10.5 nautical miles. The third example is something that I want you to calculate if you have the time and if you, and if you like. Uh, I will tell you later on when to pause the video to make the calculations for yourself and uh, shortly afterwards uh, the solution will be presented to you. So once again we have two aircraft, aircraft A and aircraft B this time. Uh, they need to be uh, labeled because we have uh, one significant change in this exercise, so in this example now. Uh, aircraft A is 150 nautical miles uh, apart from the waypoint, whereas aircraft B is 146 nautical miles uh, from the waypoint and uh, that's gonna be, he's gonna overfly the waypoint in 19 minutes. So what's going to happen now is uh, if we do not take any action, we're going to have a uh, minimum separation of four nautical miles at the waypoint, which is not enough. Our goal is once again a separation of uh, seven nautical miles. So what's for you to do now is uh, to determine the delta speed required. Um, you can pause the video now and uh, once you have determined the delta speed for yourself, we will you can continue the video and uh, I will uh, make the solution known. The solution for this example is uh, as follows. In order to achieve a uh, separation of 7 nautical miles, uh, we need a delta speed in ground speed of 9 knots. That means that aircraft B has to fly Mach 0.02 faster than aircraft A. At the end, that's uh, going to equal a delta ground speed of uh, 12 knots and a lateral separation of 8 nautical miles at the waypoint. In case you're wondering how this calculation is made, uh, let's uh, step back a little bit. Um, we have 20 minutes of time until the minimum separation is, gonna, is going to happen. So uh, 20 minutes is one third of an hour. Three times 20 minutes is one hour. If we had one hour, we, uh, in order to achieve the required additional three nautical miles that we need, because we already have four miles, so we need three additional nautical miles. And if we had one hour, uh, we would need a speed difference of three knots. That would be absolutely sufficient. But uh, since we only have 20 minutes, one third of an hour, we're going to need uh, three times the speed. So three times three equals nine knots. And uh, the next increment in terms of max separation would be 12, because there is no such thing, there is su such a thing as uh, a max number that equals 9 or not. But uh, for ATC uh, calculations, uh, we're not getting any more uh, detail than 0 0.01 knots. So therefore, we're going for 0 0.02 knots, uh, which equals a delta speed of 12 knots. After the whole Mach number shenanigans and the calculations thereof, uh, we end the presentation now with a, a rather easy example of speed control in different levels. A look at the situation that we have here. We have two aircraft, aircraft A at flight level 250. We have aircraft B at flight level 200. The two aircraft are six nautical miles apart and flying to an imaginary waypoint uh, somewhere down the route. Distance uh, to the waypoint doesn't matter in this case. What we want to achieve is uh, that we want to keep those two aircraft in uh, sequence. They already are, but we want to keep it that way. Um, the assumption is that aircraft B, uh, the aircraft in front, is flying with an indicated airspeed of 290 knots. Keep in mind, aircraft B is uh, 5,000 feet below. 
what indicate airspeed do I instruct aircraft A to fly in order to stay six nautical miles behind? Uh, keep in mind the rule of thumb is for the same indicate airspeed, uh, 1000 feet above, that equals a ground speed difference of six knots. So that means if two aircraft 1000 feet uh, apart from each other are flying for example, a uh, ground speed of 250 knots, the aircraft that is 1,000 feet higher will fly six knots faster over ground than the aircraft below. So for 2,000 feet, the aircraft uh, above will fly 12 knots faster and so on and so on. So in order to um, have to calculate the uh, speed difference in indicator airspeed that we have to assign to the aircraft, uh, we just take the 5,000 feet that equals, that's five, five times six knots is a speed difference of 30 knots that we will have to assign. So rather easy. In order for those two aircraft to stay six nautical miles apart, the solution is rather easy. We will need to assign aircraft A to fly a, an indicated airspeed of 260 knots. That's 30 knots lower than the 290 that aircraft B is flying. Keep in mind though, you know, um, in the uh, VATSIM environment, of course, you will need to instruct uh, aircraft B to fly to, uh, to keep the speed 290 knots or greater in order to avoid this aircraft uh, reducing speed without your knowledge. Once again, I have to emphasize that uh, those numbers are not exact numbers. Um, the difference per thousand feet uh, differs vastly depending on the altitude. Uh, closer to the uh, ground, it's more like five knots in difference. And uh, once you are at flight level 300 something, uh, the difference is going to be seven knots per thousand feet. But still, um, that's uh, just a ballpark number. It's just, just a value that you can work on and uh, you have to monitor uh, situations like this anyway. So therefore, you can just speed any time of your liking. That about wraps things up for today. Thank you very much for watching this video. I plan to create more educational videos catered to controlling on VATSIM. If you have any questions, uh, put them down in the comments below. And uh, if you would like to get notified once I upload more videos, please subscribe to this channel and enable the alerts. Also, I would like to invite you to follow me on Twitch. The link is in the description. I would try to answer any questions in my streams that you might have. Please bear with me while I try to improve my video creation workflow and to production quality and thank you very much for your early support. Goodbye.